The story started by showing four people standing in front of an altar. They are surrounded by a group of mages with staffs, wearing dark cloak. The princess is in front of them accompanied with knights and mages, staring with admiration. The mage beside the princess rejoiced, saying the heroes have responded to their call. Another mage asked for their permission to appraise their abilities. He pointed his equipment that looks similar to a mirror to one of the heroes, who appeared to be a student. The mage is amazed as his equipment appraised the hero to be a holy sword wielder, which possess high potential. He didn't wait long and appraised the next hero. The equipment appraised her to be a wielder of multiple strong elemental magic. The heroes looked dumbfounded. However, the princess was delighted hearing the appraisal results, as she asked the heroes to save their kingdom of Rage Setcher, also saying they are their only hope. Another hero, who looks like a corporate worker wondered if they have been summoned to another world. The mage noticed him and used his equipment to appraise him. The equipment revealed his information. His name is Mukuda Tsuyoshi, 27 years old and his unique skill is online grocery, which dumbfounded everyone. They even wondered if this skill is of any use. Mukuda felt a little embarrassed seeing everyone's reaction, so he asked if he has any other skill. However, the mage answered that it is the only skill he has. While the three other heroes attracted everyone's attention, one mage approached Mukuda to inform him that he need to meet his majesty. The king told the heroes that the demon king is trying to invade the kingdom, as he asked them to lend their strength for the sake of the kingdom's peace. He also added that the demon king knows how to send them back to their world. Brimming with sense of justice the heroes didn't hesitate and offered their help. However, Mukuda has different ideas. He found the situation to be dubious, so he convinced them that he'll just get in their way since his skill is not useful in combat. After a moment, Mukuda is shown walking in the village counting the coins that he has. He wondered if it will be enough. While walking, he realized that the villagers around him found his appearance strange so he decided he needs to buy new clothes first, before trying to gather information. After getting new clothes, he checked some shops in the village before reserving an inn to rest. Mukuda was glad that he didn't offer his help as a hero. He still think that the royal family is suspicious, and he needs to leave this country right away. While resting he called out for his status window. He was thrilled when it showed up right away. He then proceeded to check his stats and skills. He wondered how he could use his unique skill, online grocery. He tried calling out the skill name but nothing happened. He checked his status window again and tried touching the skill name. A burst of light suddenly showed up before revealing an online store, which looks like a modern shopping website. He picked some bread and water from the store. However, he couldn't check out as he didn't have enough balance. After thinking for a bit he tried using some of his coins. It worked and the items he bought appeared out of thin air in front of him. He started eating his bread right away, as he realized how useful and convenient his skill is. On the next day, he looked for a carriage that is heading to a place called Kiel's. While inside the carriage, he met a traveling merchant. He asked the merchant about his appraisal skill and item box. He was shocked when the merchant told him that these are precious skills. After hearing this, Mukuda thought that he should be more careful to avoid looking suspicious from now on. The merchant also informed him about the brewing trouble in the Rage Sedger Kingdom, and the rumor that the kingdom is about to close its borders, which shocked Mukuda. After arriving to the next town, Mukuda saw the notice that all travel services are currently suspended. Because of this Mukuda decided to head to the inn first to gather some information. He found out that since the kingdom is starting different wars, the higher-ups decided to suspend travel services to prevent citizens from leaving which could reduce the number of soldiers they could recruit for war. The adventurers also told him that they are also planning to leave the kingdom. They suggested to Mukuda that he should also leave. Afterwards, Mukuda headed to the adventurers guild as he needed adventurers to escort him and protect him from monsters as he traveled by feet to the next kingdom. He approached the receptionist about putting out the quest. He was troubled by the 8 gold coins fee but it is urgent that he leave the rage sedger kingdom so he still agreed. The receptionist introduced him to an adventurer called Werner. He is the leader of the C-rank adventurer called Iron Will. After discussing the terms, they decided to leave right away. Before leaving, Werner introduced his team. Their swordsman is named Vincent. The scout is Rita, the mage is Ramon and lastly their healer is Franca. After traveling for a while, they decided to have a break. Mukuda volunteered to prepare their lunch. While Mukuda was taking out his cooking equipment, Vincent noticed his item box skill, while Rita was impressed with his stove. Mukuda said that he got it from a friend as he know how precious a stove is in this world. While buying some necessary stuffs, Mukuda saw a stove for sale. 
However, it cost 50 gold coins which greatly shocked him. He also decided to buy from his online store instead as it is much cheaper. Yukuda prepared sandwiches and soup for lunch. The whole team was really impressed by their meal especially by the rich soup, which is an instant onion soup Mukuda bought from his online store. Orner was touched by Mukuda's willingness to let them eat such precious food. Because of this the party thought they are really lucky they took this job. After resting, the party continued traveling. They encountered monsters on the way but the adventurer team had no problems taking care of them. They butchered the huge boar they killed and Mukuda put it in his item box. After traveling for a while they decided to stop for dinner. After the delicious meals from lunch the party is looking forward to dinner. They even gathered behind Mukuda while he's preparing their food. He told them he's embarrassed so they will stop watching him. But he just really wants to hide that he's getting the ingredients from his online grocery skill. He started cooking after they left. First, he sauteed the bacon. Then he added the cabbage, carrots and boiled the potatoes. Lastly, he added some sausages. The dish he prepared was sausage-packed pato few and bread. He distributed the food to everyone and they started eating. You could have thought that they don't like it as they went quiet. However, after a few seconds they are already asking for more servings. Yukuda was surprised that they like the food so much. Ramon explained that usually, they eat dried meat and hard bread while traveling. So it feels so satisfying for them to have a soup and soft bread this time. They even said that their body felt sharper and their fatigue disappeared. Hearing this, Mukuda wondered how is it possible since he didn't add anything special to the food. He thought it was just because the food is delicious, but he still considered using appraisal skill on them. He's so surprised after seeing buffs on Rita's stats that he almost choked. Then he appraised the food and saw in its description that it provide buffs for strength and MP. He realized how dangerous it is to casually provide meals with huge buffs to others. He decided that it is necessary to keep it a secret. While they are eating, a huge monster that resembles a wolf was shown to be observing their group. They continued their journey the next day and they will reach the kingdom of Venon in two or three days. After traveling for a whole day they decided to set up camp before they enter the forest. Mukuda said that he will be using the red boar they collected from the previous day. However, this time he tried to avoid using ingredients from his online grocery as much as he can. He sliced the meat into thin slices, then he marinated it in ginger sauce. At the same time he also shredded cabbage like vegetable. Afterwards, he started frying the meat. The smell of the meat attracted the group's attention. They are sure that their meal will be delicious. Mukuda continued cooking. He made sure that the meat is completely covered in sauce. At the same time, the wolf from the previous day is attracted by the smell of the food. The group is unaware of this. Mukuda finished cooking the ginger fried red boar and he started serving it. The group couldn't wait to eat after seeing it. The group couldn't believe how delicious it is. Franca said that she usually doesn't eat red boar meat, but this time it is really amazing. The group continued eating happily. However, a giant wolf suddenly showed up behind Mukuda. It is a Fenrir. He demanded that Mukuda feed him the same dish they are eating. Mukuda didn't hesitate and gave him the remaining meat right away. However, it wasn't enough for the Fenrir so he had to cook again as fast as he can. He had to do it multiple times before the Fenrir was satisfied. Because he likes Mukuda's food so much, Fenrir decided to form a familiar contract with him. The adventurers were surprised, but Mukuda doesn't seem happy about it. He wanted to refuse but he's intimidated by Fenrir. Then Fenrir told him that he looks forward to his three meals a day. Mukuda could just look in disbelief. After establishing the familiar contract, Fenrir told Mukuda that he must give him a name. Mukuda think for a bit before coming up with the name Pachi. Fenrir didn't like it so Mukuda has to think of other names. He suggested Koro, Shiro and Hachi. While adding that these are popular dog names, Fenrir got annoyed, saying that he's not a dog. While Mukuda complained that he's being fussy. The adventurers are dumbfounded with their interactions. At the same time Mukuda suggested Fel and Fenrir finally likes it. The group continued their journey the next day. Once they are near the border, Fel attracted the attention of everyone they met. The group thought that they won't be able to enter the border. Obviously, because a Fenrir is with them, which is a legendary beast who's even famous for destroying a whole country. Warner also added that even if they could enter the country, its higher-ups will be pursuing Mukuda as he has a familiar contract with Fenrir. This troubled Mukuda, because the very reason he left Rage Sedger is to avoid troublesome situations like this. Seeing this, Fenrir told Mukuda that he will take care of everything in his way so he doesn't have to worry, then he asked for lunch afterwards. So they decided to take a break for lunch. While checking his item box, Mukuda realized that they don't have any red boar meat left. Fel insisted that he wants meat, so Mukuda told him that since he's the reason they ran out of meat, he should go hunt. 
Fell didn't refuse and he headed to the forest right away. Warner told Mukuta that he could use the meat they have. However, Mukuta said that Fell needs to provide the ingredients for his own meal. The adventurers were amazed that he could order a Fenrir freely. At the same time, Fenrir came back and dropped a huge monster in front of them. Werner identified it as a rockbird, a B-rank monster that is strong enough to trouble their party. They also added that its claws and beak are valuable, but Mukuta can't butcher it himself so he asked the adventurers, in exchange for giving them some parts of the creature. Fell said he doesn't care as long as the meat is his, so they proceeded to butcher the rockbird. Mukuta started cooking. He took out a teriyaki sauce then proceeded to fry the meat. He made sure that the meat is covered in sauce. The dish is rockbird teriyaki and onion soup. Fell complained when he didn't get a portion of the meal. However, Mukut explained that he will prepare the remaining meat for him. Fell agreed and waited behind Mukuta as he started cooking again. And Fell almost ate all of the remaining meat. They continued their journey after their meal, and they finally reached the border of the kingdom of Venon. However, before they even approached the gate, a lot of soldiers came out because of Fell. So Werner has no choice but to explain everything to the soldiers first. But they still couldn't let their guard down and surrounded Mukuta's group. The commander asked if Fell is really Mukuta's familiar, so Mukuta asked Fell to guarantee that he won't be harming the country and its people. Fell declared that he's not comparable to mindless beasts so as long as they don't try to harm them, he won't do anything. The soldiers were amazed after hearing Fell talk and their commander finally accepted that he is Mukuta's familiar, so he let the group enter the town. However, the commander is still fearful of Fell so he asked Mukuta to make sure Fell won't cause trouble inside the town. Fell was annoyed when Mukuta started lecturing him, but Mukuta threatened him that he will take away his meal if he caused any trouble. Werner assured the soldiers further that Fenrir never went wild this whole time and that Mukuta could even order him to hunt for his own food. Mukuta has to pay some coins for Fell and his entrance to the town because he doesn't have a guild card. The group was relieved after finally entering the kingdom. But after Werner reminded him that the nobles would start approaching him once they found out about Fell, Mukuta felt stressed again. However, he calmed down after realizing that he's not really going to stay in the kingdom for too long. He planned to travel and explore this new world while earning using his online grocery skill. Hearing this, Warner suggested that he should register to the Adventurer or Merchant's Guild, as members of guilds are exempted from entry taxes which will greatly benefit him. Then Mukuta thought that he should apply to the Merchant's Guild since he was thinking of setting up stalls to sell food or ingredients while traveling. But after Vincent informed him that he will need the Adventurer's Guild's help to butcher the monsters fell hunted, he had to think again. While feeling unsure, Franca suggested that he should register to both. They continued their journey. After arriving at the city Mukuda had to pay for the entry taxes again, which troubled him a bit. As he entered the city, a man approached him asking him if he is Mukuda. The man introduced himself as a servant of Margrave Lindell. The Margrave wanted to meet Mukuda after hearing that he has a Fenrir as a familiar. Mukuda doesn't want to meet the Margrave, but the servant wasn't taking no for an answer, until Fell stepped in which greatly scares the servant. However, the servant isn't ready to give up yet, he respectfully asked Fell to come with them as well. But Fell isn't like Mukuda, he intimidated the servant right away which made him run away from them as fast as he can. Mukuda was concerned after seeing this, but Fell replied that it is necessary to scare the servant away. He also assured Mukuda that he doesn't have to worry. The adventurers agree with Fell, while saying that the Margrave wouldn't even have enough soldiers to threaten Fell, as only creatures at the level of a dragon can fight with him. Afterwards, they went on their separate ways. Mukuda decided that he should head to the Merchant's Guild first. After a little walk, Mukuda arrived at the Merchant's Guild and Fell attracted everyone's attention. Mukuda didn't pay attention and went straight to the receptionist. The receptionist explained that the Merchant's Guild is not affiliated to any country. She also explained that there are five ranks within the guild. She also asked what kind of merchant Mukuda wished to be. When Mukuda answered that he's planning to travel and open food stalls she told him that iron rank the lowest rank will be the most appropriate for him. After obtaining his guild card, he asked if he could sell his items in the guild, adding that he will be bringing it the next day. Mukuda then headed to the inn, but he found out that familiars could only stay at the stables. Fell didn't care about this, however he complained that he is hungry because they ended up skipping lunch. So Mukuda decided that they should have an early dinner. He starts preparing by slicing enough meat for Fell. Afterwards, he checked his online grocery store for rice as he started missing eating it. Once the pot of rice started boiling, he proceeded to fry the meat for Fell. Fell started watching him cook, with his saliva dripping from his mouth as he looked at the meat in the frying pan. 
Mukuda finished cooking the first batch of meat, and Fell ate it in one bite. Fell asked for more so Mukuda served him another plate. However, after biting the meat Fell is intrigued as it tasted different compared to the first one. Mukuda explained that the first one is garlic-flavored steak sauce while the second one is grated bacon. Fell asked if he still has different flavors so Mukuda proceeded to take out onion-flavored sauce then truffle. Fell is amazed that each of the meat tasted so different. But he liked the garlic flavored the most so he asked Mukuda to make more of it. Fell continued eating while Mukuda is still waiting for the rice to be ready. After the rice was cooked, Mukuda cut some steak into thin slices, put it on top of the rice and added some steak sauce. He ate his steak bowl happily, greatly satisfied with its taste. At the same time, Fell is just behind him staring, seeing how happy Mukuda is while eating. He couldn't endure it anymore and asked for the same food with a serious voice. Fell really liked the rice, even though he usually just eat meat. While Mukuda is grateful that he has the online grocery skill which made it possible to still eat rice in this world. After cleaning up, Mukuda went to his room and lay in the bed, looking back to how hectic his day was. However, he remembered he had to prepare something as he get up from the bed. Then the next morning, he came back to the merchant's guild bringing the items he wanted to sell. The receptionist was surprised after checking out what's inside the bag. Then she excused herself for a moment. She came back right away and asked Mukuda to follow her to the guild master's office. It is revealed that the items inside Mukuda's bag are salt and pepper, and the quality is extremely high for this world's standards. It is even valuable enough to be treated as gifts for royalties. The guild master wanted to buy all of it while asking where Mukuda got it. Mukuda couldn't say that he got it from his world using his skill so he had no choice but to say he got it while traveling. Seeing through Mukuda's lie, the guild master apologized as he realized that it's not right to ask a merchant's source of business. He then offered Mukuda 4 gold coins for the salt and 10 for the pepper. Mukuda was amazed by the high price so he couldn't respond quickly. The guild master thought his offer wasn't enough so he raised it to 15 gold coins. But before Mukuda could say anything he raised it again to 16 then 17 gold coins which is his limit. Mukuda couldn't believe that his 10 copper coins turned into 17 gold coins just like that. After the transaction, Mukuda headed straight to the Adventurer's Guild. He went to the reception desk to register and the receptionist wasn't enthusiastic at all. She explained how the quest system works and confirmed his registration. However, if Mukuda didn't ask for more explanation she would have not explained the important details further. Mukuda concluded that adventurers must be completely self-reliant. He went to the quest board and picked a G-rank quest that he's planning to do the next day, before leaving the guild. When Mukuda returned to the inn, Fell is already complaining about how hungry he is, so he had to start preparing their meals right away. Fell asked for garlic-flavored steak again, also saying that he doesn't mind eating it every day, but Mukuda replied that he wants to eat more delicious food, which caught Fell's attention. He looked forward to eating more delicious food while still happily eating his steak. Mukuda realized that garlic is dangerous for dogs, so he decided to check Fell's status through his appraisal skill. He's really amazed with Fell's level so he started complimenting him. Fell acted like it's not a big deal, but in his eyes Fell is still just a gluttonous foodie. The next morning, when Mukuda was preparing before he leave for his quest, he's greeted by an annoyed Fell. He's demanding for Mukuda to prepare a meal for him before he departs for his quest. When they arrived at the quest location, Fell is still complaining that he's not full even after breakfast. Mukuda answered that they've ran out of ingredients and he suggested to Fell that he should hunt while Mukuda is collecting the herbs required in his quest. Fell agreed, but before leaving he told Mukuda that he could sense the presence of various monsters around the area, so he used a skill on Mukuda to ensure his safety before he left to hunt. Mukuda thought Fell would have been really cool if not for his gluttonous character. After Fell left, Mukuda checked the required herbs for his quest and started looking for it. The quest is fairly easy for him. He just needed to use his appraisal skill on the plants to find Caillou grass and Maj grass that he need. Through this way, he finished his quest quickly and he even managed to collect more than the necessary amount. Afterwards, he decided to prepare their lunch. He used his online grocery to buy ground beef, pork, meat sauce and pasta. He started by mincing and sautéing the onions, then he added the ground meat and the cans of meat sauce after, and consomme base last. At the same time, Fell arrived while bringing a rockbird which shocked Mukuda. Fell said that he liked the teriyaki made from rockbird last time so he chose to hunt another one. He added that he also hunted other monsters but he couldn't carry all of it at once. Mukuda continued cooking. He added salt to the water he's boiling before placing the pasta in the pot. Once his pasta is soft enough he started serving it. He added the sauce on top but he felt like something is lacking. 
he proceeded to check his online grocery to buy Parmesan cheese. Then his spaghetti is ready. Phil checked the spaghetti curiously, while asking if they are eating boiled vines. Nukuda explained that it is a tasty dish from his world. After hearing it, Phil tried it. He was amazed with the taste and started devouring it right away. Nukuda suggested that he try it with the grated cheese. Fell couldn't believe how much the taste has improved. Mukuda thought that it is such a luxury to be able to eat food like this even when he's not in his old world anymore. After eating, Fell was praising the food with his face covered in sauce so Mukuda couldn't stop laughing. Afterwards, they retrieved the monsters Fell hunted and Mukuda is amazed with the number of powerful monsters among it. Mukuda placed it to his item box one by one while asking Fell if all of it are meant to be his meals. Fell affirmed but he's worried after seeing the orcs among the monsters. He wondered if they could really eat it because just looking at its figure disturbed him. But Fell assured him that humans have been eating orc in this world for a long time. Mukuda felt scared after hearing it. After storing all the monsters, Mukuda decided that they should head back to town, as he wants to deliver the carcasses to the Adventurer Guild and complete his quest at the same time. Fell told him to climb on his back since his walking speed wastes a lot of time. Mukuda looks excited. After he climb up, Fell started running right away with insane speed. It is almost too much for Mukuda. He was exhausted after trying his best to hold on to Fell's back. Hearing Mukuda's complaints, Fell answered that only complete weaklings would cry about it. Mukuda was really scared of falling, but Fell answered that it would be Mukuda's fault, and he doesn't care. However, after Mukuda told him that he won't be able to eat food from his world anymore if he die, Fell groaned as he seriously think about it. Mukuda entered the Adventurer's Guild and submitted the herbs to the receptionist to complete his quest. She was impressed with the amount Mukuda collected but she thought it was just due to luck. Mukuda noticed that she is more talkative compared to the previous day. He received nine silver coins and three copper coins for completing his quest. The receptionist was about to leave, but Mukuda remembered that he needs to sell the monsters fell hunted. The receptionist was skeptical hearing that orcs are among it, but Mukuda pointed to fell as he explained it was him who hunted the monsters. She was so excited after seeing fell but she calmed down right away and pointed Mukuda to the direction where he could sell the monsters. At the same time, the Adventurer's Guild's butcher approached them as he heard them talk about orcs. After hearing that Mukuda is planning to sell five orcs, the butcher asked Mukuda to come to the warehouse with him behind the guild. He mentioned how he heard of Mukuda through the rumors, saying that a guy turned a Fenrir into a familiar. Mukuda was surprised but he started taking out the monsters from his item box. The butcher was dumbfounded seeing the amount of high rank monsters in front of him. Mukuda tried to ask if all the monsters are edible. The butcher confirmed and said that most of it are even delicacies. Mukuda was happy and told the butcher that he only wants the meat and he will be selling the rest of the part to the guild. The butcher was surprised, but after realizing Mukuda has a Fenrir, he could understand. Then he informed Mukuda that it will take until the next morning to process all the monster, and he will receive the payment afterwards. Mukuda asked if he could have the meat of at least one monster first. The butcher agreed while asking if he's fine with orc. Mukuda was hesitant but fell intervened, saying that they will have it since he hasn't eaten orc meat for a while. It didn't take long for the butcher to process it. After returning to the inn, Mukuda wondered how he should cook the orc meat. While checking his item box, he found the remaining parsley and parmesan cheese, then he took out eggs and flour. He sliced the meat thinly then pounded, before seasoning it with salt and pepper. Then he prepared the egg mixture and covered the meat in flour before dipping it to the egg mixture. Afterwards, he started frying the meat before preparing a different egg mixture. Fell was attracted by the delicious looking meat. But Mukuda told him it wasn't ready before he put some leftover meat sauce from their lunch on top of the meat. The dish is two flavored pork piccata with meat sauce. Fell really liked the dish, he said that he could eat it forever. Mukuda was about to eat, but after hearing Fell explain about the orc meat, he was hesitant to eat. But seeing Fell eating happily he decided to take the first bite. He was surprised as it was similar to premium meat and he decided that he won't judge an ingredient anymore without trying it first. Next morning, Mukuda returned to the guild warehouse to retrieve the meat he requested. While he was surprised with the amount of meat, the butcher provided him the payment for the materials he sold to the guild. Mukuda was shocked after he found out that he earned 202 gold coins. Seeing the surprised look Mukuda has, the butcher explained the value and uses of most of the materials he sold. He also remembered to gave Mukuda the magic stones they retrieved from the high rank monsters. Mukuda thanked him, then the butcher asked him again about the rumors. He told Mukuda that some people were saying that Fell is just a great wolf, but the butcher added that after seeing Fell closely he is certain that Fell is a Fenrir. 
After finding out about this rumor, Mukuda realized that from now on he should tell everyone that Fell is just a great wolf instead of a Fenrir, to attract less attention, as it could solve a lot of problems while he travel in and out of the border. He told Fell that they should start traveling again. Fell answered that he's fine with it, he's more concerned about his meal. He told Mukuda that seeing the mountain of meat has made him hungry. Mukuda could just laugh seeing how gluttonous Fell is. They proceeded to travel again, before taking a break at a place that looks like a ruins. Mukuda decided that they should stop there for the night, as he's already satisfied with how far they managed to travel considering that they left urgently. Fell answered that they would have traveled much further if Mukuda riot at his back, while asking for dinner. Mukuda told Fell that since he made them a lot of money, so they will be treating themselves this time. Hearing this, Fell got up right away and moved beside Mukuda to check the online grocery as well. Although he's still just looking for meat, Mukuda proceeded to check meat dishes in his store surprised with how much options are available for him. He thought it was raining so he looked up to check, but after seeing Fell, he realized that Fell was just drooling beside him. So he proceeded to buy multiple boxes of meat dish right away. Fell is so excited after seeing the different meat in front of him. He started devouring his food while explaining the texture and taste of each of it. Seeing Fell eating happily, Mukuda started cooking. He bought a Japanese black wagyu steak from his online grocery. After cooking the first piece, he served it to Fell, but Fell wasn't satisfied with the size. So Mukuda explained how expensive is this meat. Hearing this Fell got interested and proceeded to try it. After taking the first bite, Fell got really excited with how tender and delicious it is. He couldn't stop wagging his tail while savoring the meat in his mouth. Mukuda then explained how careful the cattle is raised for this meat to ensure its high quality. Fell was surprised after hearing it. Then he explained that since this world is full of beasts there's no need to raise animals since it is enough to just hunt down beasts for food. Mukuda provided Fell with another piece of meat which he happily eat again. They also started talking about the food in Mukuda's world. He explained that in his country they never compromised when it comes to food. Fell concluded that it is the reason behind Mukuda's cooking skills, but Mukuda thought that it's all because of his online grocery. Fell only felt satisfied after eating all the boxes of food. He told Mukuda that he felt full of energy every time he ate Mukuda's food, also adding that it is even better this time, and that he also feel he could easily beat the ancient dragon he once fought. Hearing this, Mukuda asked Fell to let him appraise his status, then he saw Fell's stats has increased by 50%. Feeling all the buff he has right now, Fell told Mukuda that he should go for a hunt to not waste it. Mukuda wanted to refuse, afraid that other monsters could appear while Fell is away. However, Fell provided him with a barrier which could even deflect a dragon's breath easily. He proceeded to leave afterwards, thinking that Fell won't be back anytime soon. Mukuda prepared his bed as he planned to sleep. Feeling comfortable in his Japanese futon, it didn't take long before he fell asleep. The scene changed to Fell, he still feel the buffs on his body. He managed to kill a rock bird instantly. Feeling unsatisfied, he went to look for stronger monsters, but the giant deer also died from one hit of his lighting magic. Then he proceeded to fight a group of orcs, then an orc general but all of them are no match to Fell. Then he started fighting a monster that looks like a chimera. The next morning, Mukuda could only scream in shock after waking up. He was surrounded by a mountain of corpse, which are all extremely powerful monsters. He decided that he won't let Fell eat Japanese black wagyu again. Mukuda and Fell are currently having their breakfast. Fell is eating mindfully while praising the grilled cicatrice. Mukuda explained that the trick is to cook it slowly starting with the skin to make it crispy. At the same time he's serving Fell more cicatrice, this time with lemon butter sauce and soy sauce. Fell commented that it has a lighter taste compared to the rock bird but he still likes it. While Mukuda said that it's like the difference between chicken and duck. Because of this Fell is eager to hunt the monster again. After hearing about hunting, Mukuda got curious how Fell hunt his prey. Fell explained that he uses claws and teeth but for weak monsters with huge numbers he prefer using his magic for efficiency. And he proudly talk about how he has been blessed by the goddess Ninrir, which made his wind magic his strongest magic. Mukuda was amazed after seeing Fell's magic then he asked if it will be possible for him to use magic as well. Fell answered that it's possible as long as he has some magic power, so Mukuda checked his status window right away. After seeing that he has some magic power he asked Fell how to use it. Fell answered that he just need to think about it. But he realized that the way Fell use his magic isn't applicable to him. He thought about it then he tried using fire magic, but nothing happened. Fell asked him what he was doing which made him feel embarrassed. To help Mukuda understand better, Fell told him to touch his body so he could feel the flow of magic. 
Then he added that he will just need to practice more after this. Mukuda started practicing. He could cast fireball now and he proceeded to throw it as he tried to hit the can of meat sauce. His fireball is too weak and it didn't came close to hitting the target, which is so pathetic that it even surprised Fell. Then Fell added that it should be expected due to his lack of training. Fell suggested that Mukuda needs some battle experience, but Mukuda didn't like the idea because he doesn't want to get hurt. Then Fell answered that getting a few minor injuries is part of the process. However, Mukuda is still against it. Feeling annoyed, Fell dragged Mukuda with him. After finding a group of goblins, Mukuda is still reluctant to take action so Fell howled to attract all the goblins towards their direction. But after seeing the goblins, Mukuda chose to run away instead. Fell gave him some instructions before leaving. After this, Mukuda didn't have a choice so he started fighting back. However, he tripped while trying to maintain his distance from the goblins. When a goblin was about to hit him, a barrier came out to block the goblin's attack which made him feel relieved. However, more goblins arrived and started attacking the barrier. Feeling desperate, Mukuda used fireball non-stop until he's about to pass out. At the same time, Fell came back to take care of the remaining goblins. It's already nighttime when Mukuda wake up. He is still feeling tense but Fell asked him how is his first battle experience, while saying that it must have been a valuable experience. However, Mukuda looked annoyed as he answered that it was a terrible experience and that he would have nightmares of it. But Fell praised him saying his fireball was impressive before he pass out, while giving himself credits for Mukuda's improvements. Mukuda complained that as a beginner he shouldn't be thrown into the middle of a goblin settlement. Fell answered that it is his fault for showing so little progress, then he realized that Mukuda's level has increased. Mukuda was excited about it and he checked his status window. He was happy seeing the improvements in his stats and that he now has fire magic as a skill. Then Fell suddenly took out a monster that looks like a huge goblin, while saying that it is a congratulatory gift. The monster is a goblin king. It is a high rank monster that has a magic stone. Although Fell was saying that it is a gift, but in reality he thought that if they earn a lot from selling the monster, Mukuda will treat him again with Wagyu steak. However, Mukuda refused saying they still have a lot of meat and money from the last time Fell hunted, so there won't be any treats for a while especially the Wagyu beef. Fell gave up, but he still complained that he is hungry. Mukuda really regret treating Fell with Wagyu steak. Then he got up to prepare their meal, however he's feeling dizzy as he fell back down again. Fell asked why he's acting foolishly. Mukuda was annoyed but he responded that he is feeling exhausted, due to running out of magic. At the same time, he opened his online grocery and purchased a lot of bread, thinking that they should eat something sweet. Fell find the smell peculiar and he demanded for meat, but Mukuda answered that he's too exhausted to cook. Then he started eating. He felt better after eating the sweet bread. Seeing Mukuda eating happily, Fell also started eating. He's amazed with the variations of the bread he's eating and he finished all of it in no time. Then he asked Mukuda to serve him more. Mukuda was surprised that Fell also liked sweets. So he started opening more packs of bread, while lecturing Fell that he could get diabetes or cavities for eating too much sweets. However, Fell refuted that it's not possible for him to get sick. Mukuda was surprised of his confidence. However, he explained that since he is blessed by goddess Ninrir, he is immune to all poisons, sickness and status ailments. Mukuda was surprised. Then he asked if it's also the reason why Fell is especially good at wind magic. Fell affirmed, while explaining that he was born with innate talent in wind magic and the goddess blessing made him even stronger. But he boasted that it's not easy to get the blessing of a goddess. Mukuda agreed as being blessed sounds like a total cheat. Realizing the benefits of the blessing, Mukuda shouted at the sky calling out the gods and Buddha while begging for the blessing. Then a lady was shown sitting on a well with a mischievous smile. They arrived at the town the next morning, but other people ran away from fear while seeing fell. Because of this, commotion broke out which attracted the soldiers' attention. They surrounded and pointed their spears at Mukuda and fell. Mukuda took out his guild card right away, while explaining that fell is his familiar. The soldier asked if fell is a great wolf while being surprised that a new E-rank adventurer managed to tame a high-rank monster. Fell wanted to refute that he's not a great wolf but Mukuda interrupted him before he could say anything. Fell started talking to him through telepathy which surprises him. The soldier told Mukuda that it's guaranteed for a great wolf to cause panic so he has to be careful when entering other towns. While the soldier was returning his guild card, Fell complained again that he is not a great wolf. Mukuda is still dumbfounded while experiencing telepathy, so Fell explained that they could converse through their minds since they established a familiar contract. Mukuda complained why he hasn't told him sooner but Fell answered there was no need previously. 
while they are using telepathy. The soldier suddenly interrupted them, explaining Mukuda's responsibilities and punishment in case something happened. Mukuda felt afraid hearing the punishments but he agreed right away. Fel continued attracting attention while inside the town. Seeing how big the town is, Mukuda thought it is necessary to obtain a map. Before Mukuda tried to get a map, he decided that he should leave Fel at the inn's stable first. Worried about his meal, Fel bombarded Mukuda with questions. He asked where is he going, what time he'll be back and what will he do if he can't find a map. Mukuda answered that he will be back at the evening while calling out Fel for acting like a possessive boyfriend. Fel didn't understand what Mukuda meant but he was annoyed, so Mukuda gave him some food and asked him to be quiet before leaving. Mukuda went to a bookstore. While looking for a map he found a book about magic, so he approached the store owner to ask for its price. The store owner answered that it is seven gold coins. Mukuda was surprised, so the store owner explained that it is really expensive because it is made of paper. Through this, Mukuda concluded that paper is a rare item in this world. Afterwards, he asked the store owner if he is selling a world map. The owner answered that it won't be available in the bookstore as it is a nationally restricted item. Mukuda left the store while disappointed, but he thought of going to the town's library next. After arriving, he has to pay two silver coins to enter, but the library closed shortly after, which pissed him off. He has no choice but to return to the inn first. When he arrived at the inn, Fell is already sulking, complaining about how hungry he is. So Mukuda decided to prepare dinner right away. However, it didn't stop Fell from sulking so he opened his online grocery and bought yakitori and tonkatsu and served it to Fell. Fell was curious of the food so Mukuda explained what are these. Afterwards, Fell smelled it a bit before starting to eat. He was greatly pleased by the mixture of sweet and salty taste, so he continued eating while explaining the taste and texture of each piece. Then he proceeded to try the tonkatsu next. Fell's mood got much better so Mukuda finally felt relieved. Once the rice is ready, Mukuda started eating as well. He had pork cutlet with Worcester sauce on top of his rice. Fell was drooling as he watched Mukuda eat. Mukuda was surprised that he still wants to eat. However, Fell demanded for more food while saying his meal was far from enough. While exploring the town, Mukuda end up in front of the pub. He is a bit scared after entering but he's desperate for information so he had to endure. He managed to get some adventurer to give him some information after offering them some free drinks. They explained that after Rage Sedger changed to a new king, they have been starting wars to expand their territory, and that the most stable kingdoms right now are Ermin and Leonhardt in the east. They also explained that since these kingdoms have a lot of dungeon they are also great for adventurers. After hearing about dungeons, Mukuda is interested but he's scared of entering one. The adventurers were surprised after hearing that Mukuda had a hard time looking for a map. Afterwards they started looking at each other, before offering to sell a map to Mukuda. Mukuda got excited hearing it. Then they told him that it was a special gift from a retired adventurer that they know. They managed to convince Mukuda to buy the map for one gold, before proceeding to leave. After the group left, the adventurers around Mukuda started laughing. They revealed that the map Mukuda bought is available at the adventurers for one silver coins. He's annoyed that he got ripped off, but he understand that this is how this world works. Mukuda and Fel continued traveling the next day. Mukuda is still dejected after getting ripped off, but Fel consoled him by saying they could earn it easily, which made Mukuda feel better. Then he decided he wanted to head east to a country next to the sea. Hearing this, Fel could just think about how delicious sea serpents and krakens are. Then they continued their journey. Ninrir, the goddess who blessed Fel is watching the two while they are eating happily. She's wondering when Fel became a familiar of a human like Mukuda. Fel suddenly asked him to get on his back, eager to depart right away. Mukuda asked Fel why he brought him in front of a cave, but Fel answered that it is a dungeon. Mukuda asked for the reason again, while visibly worried. Fel explained sometimes dungeons form in places with densely high mana, and the one in front of them just formed recently. But that's not what Mukuda wanted to know, so Fel explained again that he's here to gain some battle experience. Since his fire magic improved so much while in battle so Fel concluded they need to do it again to improve Mukuda's earth magic. Mukuda started walking away from the dungeon, but Fel throw him back closer to the entrance. Feeling scared, Mukuda run back to Fel and insist that he can't handle it. However, Fel refuted that he already explored the dungeon and it is full of weaklings, while adding that he only interfered since Mukuda's way to train his magic is fruitless. He also said that like last time, he'll be using his barrier on Mukuda while explaining that he's doing this for Mukuda to make him strong enough in case there's a time that he can't protect Mukuda. He gave Sui a look first, before finally agreeing, 
but he told Fell first that he needs to prepare first as he plans to rely on his online grocery. Fell was bewildered after Mukuda took out all kinds of food from his online grocery. Mukuda explained that the otherworldly foods give certain temporary buffs, and it was the reason why Fell felt so much stronger after eating the Wagyu steak from before. Fell finally understood as he looked at the food in front of him while drooling. Then Mukuda added that, he will eat a bit of everything since he doesn't know the specific buffs each of the food gives and he will leave the rest to Fell and Sui to finish off. Mukuda started eating, and Fell confirmed that his stats are really increasing. Mukuda started feeding Sui as well and Sui consumed even the containers, so Fell is curious if the containers could give buffs as well. But Mukuda explained that it increases Sui's level instead and Fell concluded Sui can level up as much as he wants. Mukuda started eating the desserts, he only stopped after he couldn't eat anymore. Afterwards, he checked his status window and he found out that his stats increased by about 20%. He also checked Fell and Sui's stats, Fell gained significant buffs, while Sui's stats and level both increased. Because of this, Fell urged Mukuda that they are ready to enter the dungeon now. Although Mukuda is still scared, he still agreed to enter after taking out a sword and after asking Fell to cast his barrier on him. While Sui is confidently staying in front of the group, Mukuda is walking slowly behind, feeling scared Fell even need to push him from behind. The first monster they met is a slime, while Mukuda was hesitant to attack it as it resembles Sui, but Sui didn't hesitate and killed the slime in one hit. Fell praised the excited Sui, while explaining to Mukuda that Sui's attack is highly concentrated acid. Then he urged Mukuda to make his move next. He used his stone bullet to kill a slime in a single hit which made him feel delighted. At the same time Sui is killing the other slimes casually. Fell explained that dungeons absorb anything that dies inside it, be it monster or humans and Mukuda is horrified with this. They continued going deeper into the dungeon. They met horn rabbits next but Mukuda fell into panic as he slashed at the rabbit's horn with his sword which didn't do anything. They met goblins on the next floor, although Mukuda should be training his earth magic, but he uses his fire magic instead due to fear. Fell is annoyed while instructing him throughout all of this. Mukuda started wondering why the monsters kept on attacking even when Fell is around. So Fell explained that monsters in the dungeon attack anything that enters, whether they are weak or strong. Mukuda was surprised that someone would still enter a dungeon with this conditions. Then Fell warned him that he will have to fight kobolds next. Mukuda isn't familiar with the monster so after seeing it, he ran away in fear. Fell told him it's impossible for him to outrun the kobolds so he had no choice but to fight. Due to sense of urgency and danger, Mukuda's cast time was much faster and his stone bullet is also stronger. Mukuda was proud after this but Fell told him it's still not good enough, and this time Mukuda is determined to improve and get stronger. Then Fell informed him that the last floor will have 10 kobolds. However, after arriving it is multiple times higher than that. Mukuda wanted to escape right away, but Fell dragged him back and told him to fight with Sui's aid. Fell also told him that he doesn't need to worry as he is protected by his barrier. Even after this Mukuda is still afraid. However, Sui seems excited instead and Mukuda couldn't help but think that Sui is a battle maniac. Afterwards, Fell throw Mukuda in front of the kobolds. Mukuda is frozen in fear due to the numbers of kobold attacking him but he's completely safe due to Fell's barrier. Meanwhile, Sui killed multiple kobolds in an instant, then Mukuda finally started fighting as well after Fell urged him. But with the number of kobolds, Mukuda has to cast his stone bullet non-stop, while Sui is using his acid continuously as well and he seems to be enjoying it. After a while they finally managed to kill almost all of the kobolds and the remaining kobolds tried to escape. However the corpse of the escaping kobolds are thrown back to their direction. Then a giant kobold appeared. Fell explained that it is the kobold king and it appeared since a huge number of kobold had died. Mukuda is annoyed that Fell didn't inform him before, although this time he's still motivated to fight. But after the kobold king started attacking, he ran away in fear again. So Fell had to remind him to fight back, so he used his stone bullet which didn't do anything to the kobold. Afterwards, Fell told him that his barrier may not withstand the kobold king's attack. Hearing this, Mukuda charged his stone bullet, and this time he managed to damage the kobold king. However it managed to got up while Mukuda already ran out of magic power. He couldn't do anything but to wait for the monster's attack to land at him. But in his surprise the kobold couldn't even scratch Fell's barrier. Then Sui suddenly spew a huge amount of acid on the kobold king and it melted fairly quickly. Afterwards, Sui's body started glowing, a sign that he's leveling up, at the same time Mukuda lost consciousness. When Mukuda woke up, he's already outside the dungeon and Sui reached out for Mukuda's face right away, as he is feeling worried. 
Then, Sui suddenly talked describing how much relief he is that Mukuda is safe. Realizing that Sui could now talk, Mukuda was surprised as he carried Sui near his face. Sui explained that after they killed the Kobold King he gained the ability to talk. Then Mukuda noticed that Sui is calling him Master, which touched him as he hugged Sui while thinking he's even more adorable now. Mukuda checked Sui and his status afterwards, curious how much levels they gained after the battle. Sui gained a new skill while they both gained significant levels. However, after seeing that Sui got higher stats than him now, he's suddenly depressed. Sui sadly asked Mukuda if he's not happy that he got stronger. Seeing this he answered right away that he's really happy for Sui, which made Sui jump up and down in joy. Then Mukuda suddenly remembered about Fel, Sui explained that he just went out. After thinking about Sui's ability to talk, he asked Sui if he's special for his kind, but Sui didn't know the answer as well so he just said, Sui is Sui. At the same time, Fel arrived. Mukuda suddenly had a worried expression after looking at Fel, and it is because his mouth is covered in blood. Then Fel explained that since Mukuda was unconscious for a long time, he decided to hunt for his meal. Then he added that Mukuda's food is still better as he asked Mukuda to prepare him something. Also saying that since his earth magic improved because of him, Mukuda should treat him with otherworldly feasts. However, Mukuda refuted that Fel lied to him about his barrier breaking. But it was the reason Mukuda managed to use his full power so he couldn't say anything anymore. Afterwards, he opened his online grocery to buy multiple ingredients that he will use for their meal. He started preparing his meal by slicing the onions, then cut the rockbird meat into bite-sized pieces. He also whisked the egg and add the fish stock, soy sauce, mirin and sugar into the pan. Afterwards, he placed the meat and eggs into the pan and simmer it on low heat. Once the eggs are cooked, he turned off the heat and added the remaining eggs. The dish is soft simmered rockbird oyakodon. Both of Mukuda's familiars look excited. Fel is drooling non-stop while Sui is jumping up and down in joy. Fel devoured his portions right away, surprised with the manner the eggs are cooked. Sui also like it, with his bowl almost empty already. Fel asked for another serving. It didn't look like he just ate after hunting few moments ago. And even Sui asked for seconds even though he still have some food. He insisted that he will eat it right after finishing his current bowl. Mukuda could just laugh, while feeling helpless with his familiar's big stomachs. After their meal, Sui was just jumping around playing, while Mukuda and Fel are resting. Then Mukuda suddenly asked Fel if he and Sui have spoken already. Fel answered that they were talking while he's unconscious. However, Sui suddenly joined their conversation while calling Fel uncle. Fel couldn't help blushing, feeling embarrassed. Mukuda couldn't resist making fun of Fel after witnessing this. Fel tried to convince Sui to stop calling him uncle while adding that Mukuda should be called uncle as well. Fel couldn't endure Mukuda poking fun at him, so he raised his voice at Sui still trying to convince him to stop calling him uncle. However, Sui started crying which made him feel helpless as he declared that he will only let Sui call him uncle. Hearing this, Sui rejoiced and Mukuda couldn't resist Sui's cuteness. Then the scene changed, showing Fel carrying Mukuda and Sui out of the dungeon. Sui was worriedly asking if Mukuda is fine. Both Fel and Sui are surprised with this. Sui started jumping as he celebrated. He was excited because he could finally talk to Mukuda. However, he got worried again as Mukuda is still unconscious, but Fel ensured him that Mukuda will wake up soon and he offered to talk to Sui in Mukuda's place. Sui was happy that he could talk to his uncle Fel while Mukuda was unconscious. Fel looks happy until he realized that Sui called him uncle. Fel complained, but Sui explained that since Fel is older, stronger, cooler and always kind to him so he is his uncle. Fel felt proud but he still complained before leaving to hunt for his meal. But he suddenly returned because he is worried. He instructed Sui to stay inside his barrier before leaving again. Yes. Sui was really happy because of it, while Fel is annoyed that they are ignoring him, while sandwich and eat, away from his familiars. They continued their journey the next day, Mukuda was sitting at Fel's back still vigilant of the but he's satisfied after tasting the tonkatsu, so Fel dashed towards the caravan. The fight was in the thieves' favor, but Fel arrived and howled to intimidate everyone, then he threatened the thieves so they dropped their weapons in an instant. The Mukuda, then they asked if Fel is his familiar, which Mukuda confirmed. The adventurer also remembered about the rumor of an adventurer who has contracted a Fenrir because of this. After finding out, however, she demanded that from now on he has to offer the same amount of desserts as this time. Fel followed the caravan closely with Mukuda at his back. Meanwhile the adventurers couldn't help glancing and talking about Fel. 
They want to know exactly if Fell is really a Fenrir or a great wolf. Mukuda was curious how the rumors about him and Fell reached Leonhardt, but one of the adventurers mentioned about guilds having teleportation tools used for exchanging letters, which explained everything. Mukuda couldn't help but feel worried about the countries making their move to try to get Fell to their side. He also doesn't want the information about his online grocery and being an otherworlder to be revealed. Once the caravan stopped traveling for the night, Fell sternly reminded Mukuda about the feast he promised, so they had to find a secluded place away from the caravan. Both his familiars wanted meat so he had no choice but to agree. Mukuda took out all the remaining meat and seasonings in his item box. He started preparing by cutting the cacatris breast into bite-sized pieces, then he put it in a bag and add garlic, wine and soy sauce before massaging it. Afterwards he added some flour and shake the bag. After mixing it well, he took out the meat and deep fry it. Sui is now a food enthusiast as well. He praised and described the Kara Agi's flavor while eating multiple pieces. Meanwhile, Fel is devouring his portion not caring about anything else. Seeing how his familiars eat the Kara Agi so quickly, Mukuda started cooking again. However, the great smell of the dish started reaching the caravan, so they couldn't help but look for it as they found Mukuda finished preparing another batch of Kara Agi. The merchant and the adventurers looked passionately at the Kara Agi, so Mukuda had no choice but to offer it to them. The group was amazed with how delicious this dish is and they tried to eat as much as they can. Mukuda couldn't eat a single piece as the group and his familiars eat everything. Fell wanted more but all their meat are gone. The adventurers praised Mukuda's cooking and to show their gratitude they told Mukuda that they will take care of the night watch so he could rest properly. The adventurers threatened the thieves. However, they aren't phased at all. But when Mukuda and Fell stepped in they couldn't help but shake in fear. The next morning, the group arrived at the city of Karolina. The merchant explained that it is the fifth biggest city in Leonhardt, and that his family has been a leather merchant in this city for generations. At the same time, the adventurers brought the thieves to the knights before bidding farewell to Mukuda and the merchant. Mukuda decided to visit the adventurers' guild first. However, the receptionist informed him that his membership has been revoked since he hasn't finished a quest in a month. Mukuda told the receptionist that he has been busy. So the receptionist explained that, G-rank adventurers usually tries to finish as much quests as they can to rise to F-rank, since in F-rank they are only required to finish at least one quest in three months. Mukuda had no other choice but to register again. He also informed the receptionist that he will register another familiar. When the receptionist asked what kind of familiar it is, Mukuda took out Sui proudly. When the receptionist was dumbfounded by seeing a slime, Mukuda boasted how strong and special Sui is. However, the receptionist still has a weird expression while the other adventurers started laughing at him. But Mukuda didn't care as he know how special Sui really is. While Mukuda was waiting for the guild butcher, Lars' group arrived and he asked Mukuda if it's alright if he let them watch the process as they want to see the monsters fell hunted. Mukuda agreed, but the group was shocked after seeing the mountain of high-level monsters Mukuda took out from his item box. After seeing the corpses of high-level monsters they are now certain that Fell is a Fenrir. The guild butcher was really enthusiastic after seeing the high-rank monsters in front of him. He explained the proper process to extract all the precious materials from the monster. After realizing that all the meat used on their meal the previous day are luxurious, the group of adventurers bowed down and apologized to Mukuda but Mukuda didn't mind it at all. Seeing Mukuda's kindness, the adventurers told him to rely on them if he's troubled over anything within the city. Afterwards, Mukuda went to an inn recommended by Lars. He started planning what to do next. Although he didn't really want to be an adventurer, it is necessary for him to reach F rank as he need the guild butcher to take care of the monsters fell hunted. While Mukuda is resting, the goddess suddenly complained about the lack of offerings from Mukuda, so he had no choice but to buy some sweets from his online grocery and started praying right away. The goddess celebrated after getting her sweets before reminding Mukuda to not forget the offerings in the future. Afterwards, he just hugged Sui to sleep. Mukuda returned to the adventurer guild the next morning. He's looking for quests that suits him as he planned to reach the F rank. Mukuda wanted to choose the quest to gather herbs but Fel was insisting that he should hunt some goblins. Mukuda ignored Fel completely. However, Fel started using telepathy as he continued insisting that Mukuda should hunt goblins to reach F rank faster. Fel wouldn't concede, as he's desperate to reach the ocean as quickly as possible to satisfy his cravings for kraken and other sea creatures. Seeing Mukuda's determination, he woke up Sui instead in order to use Sui's desire to fight against Mukuda. And like what Fel thought, Sui is eager to fight the goblins. However, Mukuda still didn't give up. 
He asked Sui if he wants to gather and consume herbs with him. But Sui answered that he already had the skill to produce medicine so he'd rather fight. Yukuda helplessly accepted the goblin hunting quest after this. Afterwards they started traveling towards the goblin's location. After finding some goblins, Sui asked right away if he could fight. But before Fel or Mukuda could respond, Sui already shoot his acid which instantly killed the goblin and he managed to kill all three goblins with little effort. Mukuda still feel amazed with Sui's acid. However, what he's worried about is the quest's requirement which is cutting the goblins' ears as proof that they really hunted the goblins. Mukuda looked traumatized after doing it, and Fel was annoyed with how weak Mukuda is even though he's used to cooking high-rank monsters. Mukuda refuted that it's different while raising his voice. Because of this, another group of goblins were attracted to their location. Fel gave the instructions while Sui happily shoot the goblins to death with his acids. Mukuda wanted to stop as they already killed more than the quest requirements. However, he couldn't refuse Sui's cuteness as he begged Mukuda to continue hunting more goblins. Fel didn't wait for his response as he dragged the helpless Mukuda to find more goblins. The group only stopped after killing all the goblins in the area. Sui happily thanked Mukuda after this. While Fel dragged him to the mountain of goblin corpse as he forced him to cut off all of the goblins' ears. They were troubled with the goblin's corpse as they couldn't leave it alone, because it could either attract a stronger monster or a cause for a dungeon to appear, which couldn't happen since the area is near the city. After thinking for a bit, Fel came up with a solution. He thought of using Sui's acid to melt all of the goblins. Mukuda asked Sui if he could do it and Sui affirmed right away. Afterwards Sui's size started increasing, until he's multiple times bigger than Fel. Seeing this, Fel realized that Sui has evolved again so Mukuda checked Sui's status right away. After opening Sui's status, they noticed that Sui's race changed to Big Slime and he gained a proliferate skill. Then Sui explained that his proliferate skill allow him to grow bigger or smaller, then he proceeded to make countless small copies of himself. Due to this, the mountain of goblin corpse melted in an instant. Mukuda asked Fel if he had seen something like this before. However, he answered that this is the first time he had seen something like this in his whole life. While watching Sui, Mukuda realized that Sui will be a lot stronger now after gaining this ability, and he could even use it with his potion creation skill. Afterwards, Sui complained about his hunger. They went to a different location before deciding what to eat. Mukuda suggested bread and Fel answered that he's fine with anything, while Sui answered that he love any food that Mukuda make. Then Mukuda took out different kinds of bread right away. Sui was happily trying all the variations of the bread, while Fenrir got all the bread which has some meat. Then he proceeded to praise all the food that Mukuda has been feeding him. However, he started blushing after Mukuda noticed that he's being considerate. Afterwards, Mukuda started eating as well while drinking some sweet coffee. At the same time he couldn't help feeling worried about killing so much goblins in a single day, which is enough to get him into F rank. The scene then changed to Ninrir, who's happily eating the sweets that Mukuda recently offered. However, she didn't notice that she's being watched by other goddesses. Mukuda returned to the Adventurer Guild to complete his quest, and he attracted so much attention because of the multiple huge bags full of goblin ears that he carried back to the guild. While some guild employees were busy checking the bags, another employee approached him. She informed Mukuda that the guild master wanted to meet him together with his familiars. Mukuda proceeded to meet the guild master, who introduced himself as Willem. Willem told Mukuda that he will be rewarded for taking care of the goblin settlement, but he's also excited to meet a Fenrir. Then Sui came out of Mukuda's bag after hearing about the goblins. Willem realized that Sui and Mukuda are using telepathy to communicate. Then Mukuda boasted about how strong and special Sui is, so Willem found the whole group interesting. Afterwards, Willem revealed the real reason why he asked to meet with Mukuda. The royal palace of Leonhardt welcomed the presence of a Fenrir in their kingdom as it is a huge threat for other kingdoms. However, in exchange of having freedom and being free of disturbance from other nobles, they asked for Mukuda's help in times of emergency. Mukuda celebrated after hearing this. Afterwards Willem asked Mukuda about his intention to increase his rank to F. He offered to increase Mukuda's rank directly to C rank. Considering that he has a Fenrir as a familiar, and in exchange for finishing some quest for him. Mukuda refused, however, Willem explained that the quests are a rank and S rank and are really for Fel. Hearing this, Fel announced proudly that there's nothing he could do, which delighted Willem. Willem wanted to prepare for Fel's quest right away. However, after Mukuda noticed how fully aware Willem is with his situation, he decided that he could sell the boss level monsters Fel hunted to him. 
The guild butcher Johan was amazed after seeing the Orthros and Chimera, but Willem ordered him to keep everything a secret. Mukuda then explained that he hasn't taken out these monsters to avoid causing a commotion and he only revealed it now because he trusts both Willem and Johan. However, Willem told Mukuda that although his guild could buy most of the monsters, but he doesn't have enough funds for the Chimera and Orthros. While Johan was eagerly checking the monsters, he also explained that these are either S-rank or close to it which made it really rare and valuable. At the same time, Sui suddenly came out of his bag. He's motivated after seeing the monsters fell hunted. He wished that he could beat high-rank monsters easily like fell, which made Mukuda visibly worried. Afterwards, Willem told him that he could return the next day for the monsters payment and for his C-rank guild card. Mukuda asked his familiars what do they want for dinner, and as usual they both asked for meat. So Mukuda started buying ingredients that would go well with meat. Then he started boiling the rockbird breast in water mixed with sake and salt, before slicing tomatoes and cucumbers. Then he shredded the cooked rockbird meat with the help of sui and lastly he added sesame dressing. After making the rockbird banbanji, he decided to make rockbird and pepper stir fry next. He started by cutting the rockbird into bite-sized pieces, before seasoning it with sake and soy sauce. Then he also sliced the bell peppers, before searing both the meat and bell peppers in the pan. He also added some Chinese seasoning paste while stir-frying. Fell commented how the meal isn't just meat, but he's still drooling while looking at it. Mukuda gulped some beer before he started eating. Both him and Sui really liked the sesame dressing. Then he also gave Sui the babanji that has oyster and soy sauce instead which Sui really like as well. Mukuda forgot to steam some rice so he decided to make some sandwiches instead, which Sui wanted to try as well. After multiple servings, the group is finally done eating. They noticed how cramped the stable was for Fell, so Sui thought of melting the stable but Mukuda stopped him, and instead he laid a futton for Fell to make it a little more comfortable for him. Mukuda returned to the guild the next day. He picked up his guild card first, which is now made of silver after getting promoted to C rank. At the same time he just needs to finish one quest in six months to maintain his guild membership. This is really convenient for him so he's grateful to Willem. Willem also gave Mukuda the payment for all the monsters he has sold. His earnings for one batch of monsters was 461 gold coins, which is shocking because it is even bigger compared to his previous transaction. However, Willem calculated the total and Mukuda was even more shocked, as it is 1,415 gold coins, but it doesn't even include the rewards for clearing the goblin settlement yet. After adding this, the final total was 1,946 gold coins. Mukuda was amazed with this amount, and after including his current coins, he has over 2,000 gold coins, which made him worried, thinking that he could be a target for thieves. Then Willem started explaining the quests that he needed Fell to finish. Fell must hunt a metal lizard and a pack of bloody horn bulls. Then he explained the metal lizard's location and its abilities. He also explained that the reason adventurers couldn't hunt the lizard was due to its metallic scale which made it impossible to damage it with physical attacks easily. While the bull's violent nature in its large packs is what makes the other quest difficult for adventurers. However, Fell and Willem agreed that the bull's meat really has an exquisite taste. Fell got excited thinking how delicious the bull's meat will be with Mukuda's cooking skills. While Willem was worried after seeing Fell and Mukuda's creepy laugh. After leaving the guild Mukuda and Fell planned when they should depart for the quest. Mukuda thought that they should leave the next morning. However, Fell was excited to eat the bull's grilled meat so he's even willing to depart immediately. But Mukuda still has some things to do so they decided to leave in the morning. Mukuda then visited Lambert's shop. He let Sui choose a new bag. But he also ended up buying a new purse, boots and a belt with a sheath. In total the items would cost 11 gold coins. However, Lambert wouldn't let Mukuda pay as he's grateful to Mukuda for saving his life. At the same time he also found out how expensive the meat they have eaten while traveling with Mukuda. Afterwards, Lambert also asked if Mukuda still has the skin of the serpent that he had cooked previously. But since Mukuda just sold most of the monsters fell hunted to the guild, including all the serpent, he doesn't have any left, so Lambert could just ask Mukuda to sell him next time, if he has a skin of a serpent again. After leaving, Fell complained about how long Mukuda had stayed in the shop. But Mukuda was really happy with all the stuffs he got including Sui's new bag, so he thought it was worthwhile. Then Fell asked Mukuda to cook snake for dinner. He started craving for it after listening to Mukuda and Lambert's conversation about snake. Sui agreed as he really liked the kara agia that he had eaten previously. And Mukuda decided that he'll go all out for dinner as preparation for the next morning's quest. After the marinade was ready, Mukuda decided that he will cook soy sauce and salt base like last time. 
He's planning to prepare enough food until his two familiars couldn't eat anymore. After mixing the meat with flour and seasonings, he started frying it at low temperature first as he thought that he would fry it twice to make it even more delicious. Then he started frying it at high temperature next to make it crispy. After seeing Mukuda try the first batch of karaagi, both Fel and Sui are complaining. They urge Mukuda to serve it to them right away. After getting their servings, the two familiars started devouring it. And Sui noticed the improvements on the taste right away. So Mukuda explained that it is because he fried it twice. And before Mukuda could cook another batch, Fel and Sui are already finished with their first servings. After seeing the two asked for more, Mukuda started frying again. Mukuda was happy seeing his familiars satisfied. However, he continued frying the meat which surprised Fel. Mukuda explained that it will be for him and he'll be saving some for later. Fel called Mukuda thoughtful thinking that it's all for him. At the same time, Mukuda used the remaining oil to fry some tonkatsu and chicken katsu. After Mukuda finished cooking, he gulped some beer while happily eating his karaagi and tonkatsu, and he didn't realize that both Fel and Sui are already sleeping. Then he continued eating while watching the moon. He realized that it has been a long time since he has eaten alone. Then the scene changed to Ninrir who's eating Mukuda's latest offering. After seeing how much sweets the goddess was eating Mukuda asked if she wouldn't get fat. Ninrir refuted that a goddess wouldn't gain weight. At the same time, Ninrir still haven't noticed the other goddesses watching her. Fel and Mukuda arrived in front of a mountain. It is the location of the metal lizard, which is the monster Fel needed to hunt for their first quest. Mukuda was checking the quest details to find the monster's specific location. However, Fel found the monster right away after observing the mountain for a bit. He arrived in front of the cave after a short time. Mukuda wanted to stay outside the cave but Fel didn't give him a chance to get off his back. After entering the cave, they found the metal lizard immediately. It is busy eating the metals inside the mountain. And its shiny scale was really eye-catching so Mukuda used his appraisal skill on it. And they found out that it has evolved into a mithril lizard. Fel explained that since mithril is highly compatible with magic, the magic's effect against the lizard will be halved. Mukuda thought that because of this it would be troublesome to hunt the monster even for Fel. However, Fel's lightning magic instantly killed it. He used magic that is too strong to disperse even for Mithril. After seeing the pitiful state of the lizard, even Mukuda felt sorry for it. While Mukuda was putting the lizard in his item box, he couldn't help noticing the Mithril scattered inside the cave. He thought he could use it for a knife or a sword, so he decided to collect some of it with Sui's help. Mukuda also thought of using it for an armor. However, Fel realized what he was thinking and he refuted that whether it is Mithril Ore or Mithril Lizard, nothing is stronger than his barrier. Afterwards, Fel decided to depart for their second quest. He couldn't wait to eat the Horn Bull's meat, so he dragged the helpless Mukuda to their second quest's location. Mukuda was scared after finding out that the bull is violent and has the same size as a rhinoceros. After Fel found the pack of bull, Mukuda decided to stay away from it and just wait for Fel to kill the whole pack. However, after Sui found out that Fel left them to fight, he also left Mukuda while saying that he also want to defeat some cows. Mukuda lost sight of his familiars. However, they suddenly leap out of the bushes followed by an explosion and Mukuda was thrown away by the impact. When Mukuda got up to look at the area, all the bulls are lying in the ground, dead. Sui was proud after killing the bulls that survived Fel's wind magic, and he's even happier after his uncle praised him. Sui helped Mukuda to gather all the bulls. Afterwards, they took a break and ate the sandwiches which Mukuda made with pork cutlets from the previous day. Mukuda tried to think that they're just on a picnic, but he couldn't help thinking about the corpses of the bloody horn bulls that had formed a small mountain. At the same time, Sui got curious of the soft drinks that Mukuda was drinking, so Mukuda let him try it and Sui liked the bubbly feeling he has while drinking it. Seeing the two enjoy the soft drinks, Fel couldn't help but get curious. He enjoyed it so much that he had drink one and half liters of it before he felt satisfied. Because of this, Fel started burping. Although Sui was amazed with it, he tried to deny it as he was feeling embarrassed. But he couldn't stop himself from burping so Mukuda started laughing at him. Afterwards, they returned to the Adventurer Guild to complete their quest. Johan and Willem raised their voice in shock after they found out that the Metal Lizard had evolved into Mithril Lizard. They had a hard time believing it, but after they examined the lizard's scale it was impossible to deny. They were amazed with Mukuda as he never failed to bring them crazy things. Mukuda asked if a mithril lizard is that rare, so Johan explained that the last record of it was 400 years ago. And they further explained that the bigger matter is the mithril vein where they hunted the lizard, as there are only three mountains in the world where mithril can be mined. 
Then Willem added that the Mithril Lizard will probably be presented to the king by the city lord and Mukuda would be paid by at least 5,000 gold coins on top of the original hunting reward. Mukuda almost passed out after hearing the amount. He's terrified with how much money he's earning recently. Johan consoled him on his extravagant problem. Then Willem told Mukuda that he'll need to gather the funds for the Mithril Lizard first, before reminding them to keep everything a secret. Afterwards, he asked Mukuda to take care of the bloody horn bull as soon as possible. However, they are dumbfounded, as Mukuda took out all the bull corpse from his item box in front of them. Mukuda was worried after getting involved in such an important matter, but Fel and Sui could only think about the high-quality meat that they will be having for dinner. Mukuda couldn't help but look forward to dinner as well after seeing his two familiars. After returning to the inn, Mukuda started preparing dinner right away. He cut the bull meat into thick slices, then he started heating up the pan before seasoning the meat with salt and pepper. Afterwards, he seared the meat for two minutes, one minute for each side, before wrapping it in foil to let it rest for five minutes and to spread the heat evenly. After hearing that the meat is almost ready, both Fel and Sui excitedly got up to check their food. All three of them screamed in satisfaction after taking their first bite. Fel thought that it is even comparable to his favorite Wagyu steak. It didn't take long for the two familiars to finish their first serving, so Mukuda had their second servings prepared, this time with Fel's favorite garlic-flavored steak sauce. But he also took out the truffle, onion, and grated daikon-flavored sauce, and they didn't stop eating until they are completely satisfied. While resting, Fel told Mukuda that he doesn't think he could eat raw meat again, because everything tastes better with Mukuda's cooking. Mukuda blushed a little after hearing it. While Sui is also praising him, Mukuda realized that he could enjoy his life in this new world thanks to his two familiars, so he's more motivated to keep feeding the two with more delicious food. After entering his room with Sui, Mukuda opened his online grocery right away. Because of Fel's reminder, he didn't forget his prayer, and he's already picking sweets that he'll be offering to Ninrir. Mukuda just picked randomly, as he thought that it will be fine as long as he offered Ninrir a lot of sweets. However, Ninrir still asked for additional sweets like cake, pudding, and defuku. But after Mukuda offered a whole box of sweets to Ninrir, he suddenly hear other goddesses talking to him. The three goddesses who were observing Ninrir finally showed themselves. They complained about how selfish Ninrir is, but she refuted that the offerings are in exchange for the blessing she granted Mukuda. Mukuda was curious of the situation on Ninrir's side. However, the three other goddesses told him that they will also bless him in exchange of offerings. Mukuda wasn't sure if he still needed, but one of the goddesses refuted that he doesn't even have an affinity with Ninrir's wind element so he's not completely immune to negative status effects. She also added that earth and fire magic are more suitable for him, so their blessings will give him greater benefits. Mukuda wanted to refuse. However, they really doesn't care about his consent, as they gave him their blessings while he's still trying to argue. Ninrir could only cry at this outcome. While the two other goddesses blessed Mukuda without his consent due to his affinity with their elements. The goddess of water, Ruzalka couldn't do the same as Mukuda doesn't have an affinity with water. Mukuda thought of refusing her blessings after hearing it. However, the goddess started crying as she thought that she can't receive the sweets through his offerings if he can't receive her blessing. The three other goddesses panicked after seeing her cry. They asked Mukuda to take responsibility and do something about it. While feeling troubled due to the goddesses, Sui suddenly approached him, feeling worried after seeing his expression. After seeing Sui, Mukuda thought of asking Ruzalka to give Sui her blessings instead. She gave Sui her blessing right away after confirming Sui's affinity with water, and the three other goddesses could finally sigh in relief. At the same time, Kishar noticed that Ruzalka didn't give Sui a minor blessing, so she had to explain that since she doesn't give her blessings carelessly she's free to give her great blessing to Sui. She's only using her blessing every 100 years unlike the other three goddesses who's giving away their blessings every decade which even angered the god of creation. Mukuda was amazed with how careless the three goddesses are before sending them another box of sweets while asking them to share it equally without fighting. Mukuda felt exhausted after this, then he checked his status to confirm if he really gained more blessings. Sui got curious after hearing Mukuda talk about blessings, so he had to explain that it is a protection from the goddess, and that he also received it, but Sui couldn't understand it. So they could only test their new blessings the next day. Mukuda's fire and earth magic is several times stronger now and his magic consumption is much better, although Fel still see him as a weakling. Mukuda felt grateful after seeing the huge improvement in his magic. Afterwards, he let Sui test his water magic and Mukuda was amazed seeing how strong Sui's magic is even on his first try. 
However, Sui showed them another powerful skill, which terrified Mukuda so he had to remind Sui not to use it against humans or inside the city. Even Fel was amazed with Sui's strength he even thought that Sui is now strong enough to sparring with him. But Mukuda rejected it right away. Afterwards, Mukuda started practicing his earth magic while Fel decided to go hunt first. Fel returned after hunting a snake thinking that he will receive some treats once Mukuda sold the snake skin to Lambert. But Mukuda was focused on the house he built which he proudly showed his familiars. But they are not as enthusiastic as him about it, as they are already looking forward to what food they will have for dinner. The group slept comfortably inside the house Mukuda made and Mukuda was still proud of it. Fel couldn't refute anymore as he also slept well inside it. Fel asked Mukuda their plan for the day. He wanted to hunt but since Mukuda is a C-rank adventurer now it's not necessary to hunt every day anymore. So he decided to return to the guild and sell the Black Serpent skin to Lambert as well. Mukuda earned even more money after returning to the guild, as the remaining bulls was butchered by Johan. Afterwards, he sold the Black Serpent's parts except its meat and skin. Then they returned to the inn as Sui is already asking for his meal. After returning to the inn, Mukuda announced proudly that he'll make something new today, while happily taking out a meat grinder that he had bought from his online grocery. Afterwards, he showed his two familiars how the meat grinder worked by using the horned bull meat as an example. Sui also asked to try it as he found it fun, and he easily ground huge amount of meat because of his strength. Then Mukuda finally chopped some onions, before mixing milk, breadcrumbs, meat, eggs and the sautéed onions. Then he seasoned the mixture with salt and pepper before kneading it and shaping it into small patties with Sui's help. He decided to store half of the patties, while he grilled the rest while Sui and Fel was excitedly watching him. When the patties are cooked, he poured some ketchup and Worcestershire sauce in the pan before pouring it on top of the patties as he served it. Fel was drooling after seeing the hamburger steak. The three really like their meal. Fel started devouring it while Sui is checking the food's ingredients while eating happily. After having their meal, Sui was cleaning their dishes like usual while Mukuda started washing his clothes. However, he wasn't satisfied with this world's soap so he decided to buy some from his online grocery, and he's also planning to sell some of it to Lambert. But he transferred the conditioner and shampoo to a different container first to avoid suspicions. At the same time, Sui suddenly called out to him while he's happily playing in the bucket of water. Because of this Mukuda wished he could also take a bath as he haven't taken one for a long time. Afterwards, Mukuda meet up with Lambert to sell him the serpent skin, and because Lambert was satisfied with the intact snake skin, he paid Mukuda 50 gold coins. Then Mukuda took out the soap, shampoo and conditioner that he's planning to sell. Lambert was amazed with the soap's quality but Mukuda started explaining his other product's effect to Lambert. Mukuda was dumbfounded when Lambert suddenly turned quiet. However, he suddenly thanked Mukuda just for being acquainted with him. He explained that he's having trouble thinking about gifts he could give to her wife in their coming anniversary, as she didn't want any bags or accessories so he had no idea what to give her. But the items Mukuda brought are the perfect gifts for his wife as she likes to take a bath, so he's now safe from getting his wife's silent treatment. However, Mukuda is more focused on the bathtub Lambert mentioned, and he asked Lambert right away if he could see it. Lambert agreed, as he showed Mukuda the bath they owned, he also admitted that they are proud of it. Then he explained that painted and colorful ones are more expensive as it has a magic tool to heat up and purify the water. He also added that although it cost around a hundred gold coins, but it could be considered a symbol for a merchant's success. Lambert noticed how eager Mukuda was to have his own bathtub, so he told him that he can introduce him to a shop that sell bathtubs. Before Mukuda left, he provided Lambert with a piece of each toiletry item he has. Lambert said he'll give it a try first as he's afraid his wife will be mad thinking that he made her try some strange items. Mukuda came back the next day and Lambert was anxiously waiting for his arrival inside his shop. But it was his wife who welcomed Mukuda first. She explained how envious she was seeing his husband after his bath, as he gave off a nice fragrance and his hair had a brilliant luster. Lambert cried while saying that he's hoping to surprise her for their anniversary. But she refuted that she wanted to try the items right away, and she's more than satisfied with the results. Lambert praised her wife's beauty right away, so Mukuda couldn't stop himself from being annoyed as he watched the two flirt in front of him. Afterwards, Lambert started discussing the items with him. Mukuda thought that he will now be willing to buy the items from him. However, he was surprised when Lambert offered him to use his shop to sell his items. Then they explained that Lambert was hesitant at first as his shop is for selling leather. 
However, his wife noticed the potential of the items and she wouldn't let any other merchant buy the items from Mukuda. She's confident that any lady whether they are nobles or commoners would fight for this items. Then she asked Mukuda again to sell his items through their store exclusively. Mukuda agreed and she asked to discuss the details right away, but she accidentally revealed her real intentions which is to make sure that she'll be able to acquire the items for herself. Mukuda returned to the inn after. He felt exhausted because of this transaction as he spent a whole day filling up the bottles with shampoo and conditioner. Fell asked Mukuda's plan for the day, intending to suggest that they should go to a dungeon. However, Mukuda refused before he could even finish his words while adding that they need to meet Willem at the guild. Fell reluctantly agreed. After entering the guild, Mukuda heard other adventurers talk about wyverns and he already have an idea on what's going to happen. Mukuda screamed after entering Willem's office. He's shocked after seeing the stack of bags full of gold coins beside Willem. So Willem explained that the city lord was really grateful because of the mithril mine. But Mukuda's mind is somewhere else. He's already thinking of buying his bathtub. However, a guild employee suddenly entered the office informing them about a swarm of wyverns. They rushed out of the office, while the employee explained that a low-ranked adventurer party was attacked by a swarm of wyverns while hunting in the plains. And although the party managed to escape, but most of them are poisoned on top of being heavily injured. Mukuda was terrified seeing the party's grave situation. Willem checked the party but he found out that they've already run out of potions. Hearing this Mukuda took out some high-quality potions and gave it to Willem. Willem poured it to the adventurer's wound right away, and they were shocked when it instantly healed the adventurer's wound while removing the poison. Mukuda could only look away, as Willem stared at him with disbelief. After healing the other adventurers, Willem announced an emergency quest. He required all adventurers at sea rank and above to join the guild as they hunt the wyverns. Although they were scared at first, they've become willing to fight after Willem explained that the wyverns will be attacking the city if they don't hunt them right away and everyone was fired up after Willem talked about their pride as adventurers. However, Fell suddenly interfered and announced that he will take care of the wyverns. Mukuda and the adventurers were shocked, as some thought that Fell is just a great wolf. Mukuda tried to stop Fell, but he thought it will be a great exercise while adding that the wyvern meat is delicious. Mukuda was still trying to stop Fell. However, Fell suddenly asked Willem if the wyverns he hunted will belong to him. Willem affirmed, while offering to bring the adventurers with him to help. But Fell refuted that they would just get in his way, so Willem could just entrust the whole city's safety to Fell. After this, Mukuda could just reluctantly join Fell as they headed to the Wyvern's location. Even Mukuda could tell how dangerous the Wyverns are, but Fell was just annoyed seeing them fly in the sky, while Sui curiously asked if they will be fighting this creatures. Hearing Sui asked about the Wyverns, Fell thought that it will be a great opportunity to teach Sui how to hunt flying prey. Although Mukuda was against it, Sui rejoiced hearing his uncle's words. Then Fell brought Sui with him as they head straight to the middle of the swarm of wyverns. Fell instructed Sui to aim at either the wyvern's head or wings. Then Sui gave it a try as he aimed at the wyverns with his acid. He was disappointed that he missed its head. However, he still managed to hit its wing making it unable to fly. Afterwards, Fell finished off the fallen wyvern by cutting its head off using his magic. Before they continued their hunt, Fell reminded Sui to avoid damaging its body as they are planning to eat it. While explosions are all over the place, Mukuda was hiding behind a huge boulder, and he was dejected after seeing his cute little Sui slowly becoming a battle maniac like Fell. While troubled with Sui's situation, a wyvern managed to sneak behind Mukuda. It attacked Mukuda but it couldn't hurt him as he was protected by Fell's barrier. And Sui blocked its next attack before Fell finished it off. Mukuda felt exhausted watching the battle but his two familiars complained about their hunger. So Mukuda had no choice but to prepare some food, as he took out the patties he prepared previously. Fell asked if they will be eating hamburgers again but Mukuda answered that he will cover it with breading this time. Then Mukuda started preparing by covering the patties with flour, egg and breadcrumbs before deep frying it. Mukuda explained that it would taste completely different by just preparing it in a slightly different way. They ate happily while talking about their favorite flavors. At the same time, everyone inside the guild are nervously waiting for them. They had no idea that the group are just having their usual picnic after easily killing the swarm of wyverns. The scene then changed to the three other heroes who was summoned with Mukuda. They didn't expect that the Mukuda who they didn't expect to survive, and the adventurer who tamed a Fenrir is the same person. And while Mukuda is having fun eating all kinds of delicious food they had to endure eating the disgusting food they prepared.
It is night time already. Everyone at the guild are worried because Mukuda's group still haven't returned. However, Mukuda suddenly entered the guild and Willem anxiously asked how was their hunt. So Mukuda asked Fell to explain the situation. So Fell told everyone that they have hunted every single wyvern in the area, and all the adventurers and knights celebrated after hearing this. Mukuda was surprised with their reaction. So Willem had to explain that even if all of the adventurers in the city worked together to hunt the wyverns, half of them would still die. The adventurers were really worried about their hunt, so Mukuda decided that he wouldn't reveal that they easily hunted the wyverns and they were just busy camping and eating. However, Fell revealed it himself and Sui praised their meal like they really didn't care about their hunt. Afterwards, Mukuda stayed at Willem's office, he explained that they had collected 13 wyvern corpses and that its body is intact except for its chopped head. Then they agreed that the guild will butcher the wyverns for free and Mukuda will have all the meat, but the guild could only afford the materials for half of the wyverns. After this, Mukuda returned to the inn. He was busy with the wyvern issue so he forgot about the offerings for the goddesses again. And the goddess of fire, Agni is already asking for it. While Mukuda was picking the offerings and talking to Agni, the three other goddesses messaged him secretly. All of them are asking for their preferred offerings. Agni was pissed when she found out about it, but she also asked for the offering she wants, which is booze. Because of this situation, Mukuda could just think how they are not like goddesses at all and he felt helpless as he listened to the goddesses argue with each other. While Mukuda was walking in the city, everyone is already talking about them. They are now famous for hunting the wyverns. Mukuda stopped by a shop. It is the bathtub shop that Lambert has recommended. The shopkeeper showed Mukuda multiple bathtubs each with better quality than the previous one. But Mukuda only picked an ordinary looking bathtub so the shopkeeper thought he's just an ordinary customer. However, he was shocked when Mukuda paid the bathtub up front and that he even have an item box. So the shop employees bowed respectfully at the departing Mukuda. Mukuda happily left the shop as he finally obtained the bathtub that he always wanted. He also decided to leave the town right away because he's not comfortable having the citizens' attention all focused on him due to the wyverns. After arriving at the forest, Fell gave Mukuda his barrier before he left to hunt. While Mukuda built four stone walls and placed the bathtub in the middle, then he asked Sui to fill it up with water before he used his fireball to heat it up. But before he entered the tub he made sure he thoroughly washed his hair and body first. Sui also joined him in the tub, relaxing and he's curious of the nice smell that is coming from the bath salts. And they both drink a bottle of milk after their bath. After this, Sui started to love baths as much as Mukuda but they wish Fel could have taken a bath with them as well. Mukuda then took out the wyvern meat as he planned to prepare their meal. He has high expectations for the wyvern meat because Fel praised it. After taking out all the ingredients, he started slicing the onions and the wyvern meat. Then he added soy sauce, sugar and sake into the water before bringing it to a boil. Once it's boiling he added the ginger paste before the meat and onions. Once it's ready he put some meat, onions and soup on top of the rice before serving it. But Mukuda was surprised that Fell still hasn't returned from hunting, so he decided to buy another set of ingredients and prepare another dish. He cut all the vegetables before cutting the meat in large chunks. He seasoned the meat with salt and pepper before sautéing it until the outside turned brown, then he added the vegetables. Once the vegetables are cooked he added the wine, water, consomme, demi-glace sauce and a little ketchup. Afterwards he just simmered it more. At the same time, Sui noticed that his uncle Fell is back from hunting. However, a huge lizard appeared in front of them instead, which shocked Mukuda. But it was just a corpse carried by Fell. He explained that he wasn't satisfied after hunting the wyverns so he also hunted this earth dragon. Mukuda was terrified after finding out that it was a dragon. But Fell only cared about its meat's delicious taste. However, Mukuda still complained that the rare high-rank monsters are already piling up in his inventory because they are all impossible to sell. But Fell just really care about its meat and what troubles him is if the guild couldn't butcher it for him. At the same time, Fel noticed the nice smell from the dishes Mukuda prepared. Then Mukuda explained that it is all from the wyvern meat. Fel was excited to eat after hearing this, however Mukuda didn't let him eat as he was dirty. Fel was covered in dirt after fighting with the earth dragon and Mukuda pointed it out while calling him filthy. But Fel refuted that it's not true because he groomed himself properly. But Mukuda stored all their food and warned Fel that they won't eat until he finished his bath. Fel complained when Mukuda bought items used for grooming dogs, but Mukuda didn't care. Afterwards, Mukuda started brushing Fel's fur, but Fel complained that he's not a dog while asking him to be more gentle. Then Mukuda started throwing water at Fel to wash away more dirt, 
but Fel's size make it difficult for Mukuda to wash him this way so he asked Sui to make a water hose for him. With this it was much easier to wash Fel who was desperately covering his face. Then Mukuda started rubbing Fel with soap and Fel liked it. However, when Mukuda wanted to wash his face he was visibly scared. But Mukuda made fun of him and his pride as a legendary beast was hurt so he decided to get on with it. Then Mukuda took out some towel to dry Fel's fur but Fel shaked his body to dry himself up which made Mukuda wet instead. This time Mukuda decided to use his fire magic with Fel's wind magic to create warm wind to dry themselves. Mukuda is now satisfied with how clean Fel is and he even called him a handsome dog that looks more like the legendary Fenrir. Fel was acting proud while also refuting that he's the legendary Fenrir. Before asking for his meal, Mukuda heat up the rice and judon before he serve it to Fel. However, Fel thought that Mukuda was trying to trick him as the amount of rice is way more than the meat. So Mukuda had to explain that judon is really eaten this way. And like usual, Fel is amazed after giving it a try and he even praised the rice that he wasn't interested with few moments ago. Seeing his familiars eating happily, Mukuda also started eating and he was surprised that the wyvern meat is similar to the wagyu beef. He didn't expect that the wyvern meat is such a high-class ingredient. Then both Sui and Fel asked for their second servings. Fel was looking for the other dish Mukuda prepared. But Mukuda explained that they will eat it next time as it will taste much better the next day. While eating, Mukuda told Fel that he will be taking a bath twice a month. Fel broke into cold sweat hearing this as he thought it's the only time that he'll be taking a bath. But Mukuda added that they will be maintaining his cleanliness and to help Fel make up his mind they also asked Sui's opinion. And obviously he answered that he prefer the shiny and fluffy Uncle Fel, which even made Fel blush as he reluctantly agreed. After their meal, they came back to the guild to sell the Earth Dragon's corpse. But like what Mukuda expected the guild doesn't have the funds for it. Johan even admitted regrettably that he's not good enough to butcher the dragon as every part of it is a precious material. Although Willem is disappointed, he still informed Mukuda where he should go to get it butchered. Willem then pointed the location of Dalan in the map, as he explained that the guildmaster there is knowledgeable in dragons so he might be able to butcher the earth dragon. Fel was happy as he realized that they will pass Dalan on their way to the sea. Willem was curious, so Mukuda explained that they are planning to travel to the sea as Fel wants to eat sea serpents and krakens and Fel was announcing proudly that it will be delicious with Mukuda's cooking skills. Willem and Johan could only laugh after hearing their ridiculous plan. Then Mukuda visited all his acquaintances in the city informing them that they are leaving before meeting up with Willem again for the map and the introduction letter. After leaving the city, Mukuda started planning. First they will need to meet Dolan's guildmaster and get their earth dragon butchered. Then they will hunt the krakens and sea serpents. Then the scene changed to the group while they are having their dinner. Fel was amazed after eating the stew Mukuda prepared the previous day, and he's already looking forward to what they will be eating next. Mukuda could just smile at his two familiars who became complete foodies. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and look forward to more full anime series recaps.